Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquay of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. And this morning, I like to capture my, my thoughts with a little bit of medicine, and it's uh, sore thumbs and placebos. Well, sore thumb, you know, a sore thumb, yeah, that sticks out. And then placebos. Placebos are really uh, non-functioning palliatives for a particular illness or something, because it is it is supposed to have a psychological effect. It doesn't trigger anything, but it just triggers your mentality that says, look, I'm taking medication, so it helps your natural resolve and your natural resources to kick in in order to be able to bring healing. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the story of David and um, Bathsheba and Nathan, you know. Now, I just realized that, you know, David did what he shouldn't do. And um, he was sitting in his court and of course he was very happy. You know, everything had been buried, everything had been done. Yeah, the storm will blow over and all of that. And in walks um, uh, Nathan. And when Nathan walks in, Nathan begins to talk to him that, listen, you have done something which is wrong. Now, I'm, I'm sitting down there and I'm saying, was it only Nathan who knew what David had done? Surely not. There were other people who knew, but nobody was bold enough to confront the king. You know what they were doing to the king? They were offering him placebos. They were giving him pleasant platitudes. They were hailing him and they were serenading him. They were applauding him. They were decorating. They were, they, 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 they were giving him nice, nice words that would fill his ego. They were saying nice things to him. None of them was bold enough to say, King, I think that this one, I think you missed it a little bit. How sad is it that sometimes when people sit in positions of prominence, we don't have people who have the capability of looking them in the eye and say, my friend, your, 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 your fault is sticking out like a sore thumb. This thing that you've done is sticking out. Everybody knows it. Why is it that we are afraid? But we rather offer them uh, pleasant uh, platitudes. We offer them palliatives that are non-scoring palliatives. Why do we have to give them placebos? Why? Why can't we look at people in the face and tell them, my friend, this is wrong. Why do, why do we have to do that? Why, why, do we, why do we compromise the truth? Why are we afraid to offend people? Because we know that what they're doing is wrong. Why are you then offering them placebos? Why are you salving their conscience? Why are you trying to applaud them? Why are you clapping for them? Why are you blessing them? Why are you telling them that this is this thing that you're doing? Yeah. Why don't you tell them that I think this is wrong and you need to deal with it? You see, sometimes when the king is naked, nobody can tell the king you're naked. And everybody is just saying to the king, oh, you're all right. But the king is naked. David was in serious error. David was out of order. And nobody could tell him, it's as if the prophet come and tell him that this is what you've done. This is wrong. And sometimes you'd be very surprised, you'd be aiding and abetting. That was what Joab did. He aided and abetted him in that crime. But the, but the arrow of the king is sticking out like a sore thumb. David's mistake was sticking out. It was thinking. You can push it under the rug, you can push it under the carpet, but it was think. And somebody must be bold enough to say in the room, mm, something is thinking under the carpet. King, it is yours. People must be able to look at their friends and for, it, 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 it's not, it may be like a risk for the friendship to end, but you should look at them in the face and say, I think this is wrong. I think this is wrong. And sometimes we sit down and then we, we, we go into pleasant uh, platitudes, serenading the person, letting the person think that the whole world is against the person. The whole world is not against them. The person, the person did wrong. Let's tell him. And sometimes we'll be meandering and uh, walking around the person. And the person, see, the person's conscience is saying, I have done something wrong. And you are offering them conscience solving, conscience searing material. No. Nathan said, I'm not going to do this. What you've done is sticking out as a sore thumb. It is there for everybody to see. Okay, you are the man. You have done wrong. Give the person an opportunity to come to grips with what the person has done. Give the person an opportunity to look at the person's self and says, man, I blew it. That's what you do. 
But if you go there and then you go and you, you know that's and sometimes this is how hypocritical we are. We would we'll be telling the person, oh, you know, you know this thing. But behind the scenes, we're telling everybody that this thing, the person did it so wrong. Come on. Stop offering placebos when the sore thumb is sticking out. Sometimes we need to bring painful medication to solve the problem. Truth hurts, but truth helps. Choices are ours. See you later.